Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Open at Microsoft. Today, we're going to be talking all things AZD, and that's Azure Developer CLI. And I'm joined here by one of the wonderful team members of that project, Grace Kulin. Yeah. So, Grace, where did the Azure Developer CLI originate from? Yeah, so it started uh, a few years ago. It started off as something called Azure Accelerator, which was basically just a GitHub repo template. Um, and you could, like, there was a button to, like, fork and use that template, and then you could use it to, like, eventually get your app deployed to Azure. But the developers and PMs realized that uh, developers needed help with the entire end-to-end -end engineering system, not just, like, this one template. They also needed help with things like infrastructure as code, CI, CD, and monitoring. And they needed to learn, like, all these Azure-specific principles, like, uh, specific things like service principle, how to connect multiple Azure resources, setting up CI, CD, and how to monitor their resources. And that's a lot of things to know and learn when really what you want to do is code. And um, so it started out with like that repo and then it eventually became what it is now, which is a command line tool. Amazing. That kind of sounds like the entire DevOps lifecycle in sort of one sort of tool. So mm -hmm. what would you say the main purpose of AZD really is then beyond just templating? Because surely there's more to it, right? Yeah, definitely. So um, if you look at my screen, um, you can see this is kind of what I was just talking about, where like there's a bunch of things you need to learn and a bunch of things you need to set up in order to just what this example is, just a simple like to-do application. Um, there's, I think, nine different services or not, yeah, nine different services that you need to set up in order to just get this one web app deployed. Um, and so the purpose of AZD is you don't have to actually go through the Azure portal and manually set up all of these things. We have templates that you can use that have the infrastructure as code and all of those things ready to go out of the box. You can use AZD, um, a command called AZD init, and get that I mean, uh, get that template locally on your computer, and then you can do whatever you need to do if you want to change uh, like any of the app code. You can do that, and then you can deploy it. One command, AZD deploy, and it'll go through. It'll provision your application. It'll deploy all of those services. It'll create your resource group, and shortly thereafter, you'll have your entire application up and running on Azure. Um, so basically the idea is to not have to worry about all those little things and you just have to do the, uh, like, you just have to make your app code essentially. Yeah, brilliant. So this kind of sits in the background of a project and it's sort of like infrastructure as code, but a bigger version of what you typically write, maybe like a Terraform or a bicep file. So mm -hmm. you mentioned these are templates. Mm -hmm. What are these templates written in and sort of how, how'd you go about adding them to your project? Yeah, so there are there are a bunch of templates that you can use um, on our template gallery. Oh, whoops. Our template gallery, which is called Awesome AZD. We have a bunch of templates. I'm, I was searching for something just now, but you can see we have 100 templates as it currently is. Um, so there are a bunch of templates that you can use. There's many different languages, .NET, Python, TypeScript, a uh, bunch of frameworks, all of our Azure services. And of course, everyone loves to talk about it now. We have our AI templates as well using ChatGPT. And um, the great thing with the templates is we have all of these templates, a bunch of variety of use cases, but you don't have to use the templates just as they currently are. They're designed to be extensible. You can rip out all of the code that's in, like all of the code for the app that's in there, and you could put your own code in there too. So it's designed to be like a good jumping off point. Um, for your application development. Yeah, amazing. I like the fact that you touched on AI there. Uh, I think people are going to be really interested in uh, <laughs> deploying services with Azure, OpenAI, ChatGPT, or these kind of AI uh, services we have. I think what's really quite nice about this and what you've just said there is that because these templates are written in Bicep and Terraform, I believe it's on Terraform, right, as well? Yeah, Terraform um, is another one, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. That means that... The extensibility of this is essentially the service print or the service APIs of Azure with those languages, right? So you can effectively tie all these different services together, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. That, that That's the goal. <laughs> 
Amazing. So what sort of languages does it support then? Because presumably, you know, it supports a bunch of languages. Which ones? Yeah. So um, if you go on Awesome AZD, you can see all of the languages that currently have templates. Um, so there's .NET, Java, JavaScript, Node, PHP, Python, and TypeScript. Um, those are all the ones that currently have templates at the moment. Nice. That's pretty extensible. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think with some of the most popular languages, um, you kind of cover them cover them all there. Yeah. Uh, that's brilliant. So, so developers are going to find this useful and pretty helpful when developing their applications. But what do you think is the single most important part about AZD and how you are getting this or using it as a tool, as a developer? What's the most useful part and purpose of it? Yeah, well, I think especially when you're first maybe starting out with cloud development, the most important thing is that you don't have to worry about all of the nitty gritty things of Azure. There are so many things to learn when you're first starting out. I know like personally, when I had my first my, my Microsoft internship and I was trying to get a web app up on Azure, it took me weeks to get everything figured out and working just how I wanted it to. And looking back, like that was three years ago, if I had had ACT then, that stuff would have taken me a day to get all set, set up. So that's the biggest thing. But I also think kind of by the same token, it accelerates the time that you need to get, to, that it takes you to get on to Azure. Um, so instead of like spending hours, like deploying a temp, like getting a template deployed manually in like the portal, for example, you run one command, it takes maybe 10 minutes to get everything up and running. So for sure the time that it takes to get onto Azure. And of course, having these templates as like a jumping off point is huge. Um, it's really difficult to like figure out all of those things that you need to do um, to get your application onto Azure and functioning and have monitoring and have CICD. Like all of that is really confusing to set up and AZD helps you with all of it. It is. I think filling in those skills gaps is actually quite important. What do you think is one of the best use cases as a developer? Do you, think, do you see it sort of being used in corporate environments, maybe as like a start out or a student? Where do you think this fits in most for developers and where do you think they should use it? Who yeah, knows? that's a really good question. I think that maybe I'm biased because I work on AZD, but I would hope that anybody, any developer could use it. It should be useful for a variety of cases. I mean, I know that you personally... Uh, have showed this to students at Duke and they were really excited about it. Um, I know when I was a student, we really didn't touch that much on cloud development. So if you're a student who's interested in that, you might not know where to begin. And AZD is a really great place to start off from because of the templates that we offer. But I also think by the same token, I know I've personally done some research around this. Um, people who are Start, like at startups find that really interesting too because they're worried about their startup and what the product is and how do we get this like to scale and all of those things and not having to worry about like getting everything set up in the cloud, like all of that nitty gritty infrastructure. That's a big deal. That's a huge time saver yeah. for them. Yeah. So I think uh, you kind of answered it in a really nice way there. I think you also touched on something which is actually quite imperative, and that's startup founders. I know at Microsoft, we have connected with Founders Hub, especially certainly the things that I do. Um, and I do see speaking to founders, uh, especially non-technical founders, who maybe know how to write a small bit of Python or a small application, wanting mm -hmm. to get their application like a fully fledged sort of service application on the cloud. They find this as a really, really good way uh, to get started. So I think it's really quite nice to see it spread across so many different use cases and so many different areas, um, whether you're sort of a beginner or an expert, I think it's quite cool. I think you encapsulate that quite, quite well. Yeah, now definitely. I have one more question to ask you. Open source, since this is open at Microsoft, what is the open source elements of AZD? Yeah, I mean, AZD is completely open source. I believe it has been since the very beginning. I wasn't here when it first started. Um, so there is, of course, our like main GitHub repo, which is uh, called Azure Dev. And this is where like our core AZD tool, like the CLI tool, all of the things for that are housed in here. Um, a good pl place to start, if you check out our issues, we have a label called uh, Good First Issue. And um, not too many issues that tagged there right now, but I can certainly go through and try to tag some more. So these are a bunch of issues that are a good um, like jumping off point if you want to uh, contribute to a uh, AZD and you haven't before. A uh, good place to start. We are always accepting contributions. Um, so if you are interested in those issues, feel free to grab one and then make a PR. And our amazing team of engineers will review it and hopefully get it checked into AZD. 
if none of those issues are interesting, you can certainly email me and we can work together and try to find something that might be of more interest to you, something specific and easy to do that you want to work on. We're certainly open to that. And um, back to Awesome AZD, you, we also are completely open source here as well. You can uh, go to our GitHub repo. Uh, it's linked on this button right here. And we don't have good first issues tagged here. Maybe I'll work on that um, eventually. But the big thing for Awesome AZD, you can contribute a, tep a template. So if you don't see the type of template that you want here, if you feel like um, there's something that you want want to have added into Awesome AZD, you can go to our contributor guide and you can work on getting your own uh, AZD template added to our gallery and then everybody can use it too. Amazing stuff. So there we have it, everybody. There is so many different ways you can get uh, into open source and contribute your wonderful contributions to this project through a myriad of ways. And yeah, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Grace for showing that a roundabout way and giving us a good overview of AZD and what the project is about, where it came from. And I guess uh, if they want to email you, we can either put your email address in the description below or maybe write up how you can get started um, with a good first issue and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be absolutely fantastic i think for the next episode we're going to maybe wrap up a little bit uh, of this one and move more into the awesome azd website and see what you can do with templating so stay tuned for the next episode everyone yeah i think you Thanks guys might even watching. be um deploying a template in the next episode too so it'll be exciting stuff <laughs> we certainly will we're going to be seeing what we can do uh, so thank you very much grace it's been great to have you yeah thank you for having me this was awesome